Columbia, it's Revzilla. Man, I got a wicked case of the winter blues back there in Philly, so I headed out to Sin City. After the casinos got done with me, I realized I just wanted to be on a motorcycle. So I put myself on a 2016 Harley Davidson Sportster Iron 883. And I got north of the city out here in the beautiful Red Rocks, where I'm running this baby through its paces. Now those of you who are familiar with the Sportster know that this is the modifier's dream. If you want to get into the world of backyard building, the Sporty is arguably the best platform upon which to do so. So we're going to give you the standard Revzilla review. I'm going to tell you about how this gets up and goes and how it hauls down to a stop. And of course we're going to talk about how it makes its way through a turn. But there's a kicker to this review. Spike's actually coming back home with me. We're starting a new Sportster modification series where we're going to bolt all manner of aftermarket parts to this Sportster and we're going to talk about what parts do best in what scenario. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's get out there right now and test this baby in stock trim. Sportster was born in 1957 when Harley graced its K model with a new overhead valve engine. The recipe was pretty simple. They took a nimble, short, light handling frame and put a peppy, unitized motor inside of it. The result was probably pretty predictable. Instant success. It's such a good recipe, in fact, that nearly 60 years later, so many riders call the Sportster the perfect bike for them. Sure, the bike's been modernized over the years. For instance, this sporty iron you can see here has a keyless ignition fob and optional ABS. But really, this bike stayed pretty true to its roots. Perhaps it's for that reason that so many generations of riders have thought that the Sportster was the perfect bike for them. New riders, returning riders, and even some seasoned vets. Now, if you're considering a Sportster for yourself, you should probably know the Sportster iron in particular is a great bike for those who have a short inseam. Just because you don't have long legs doesn't mean you don't want a cruiser that packs a little bit of punch to it. And you also probably don't want a bike that's particularly tall or unwieldy. Now, if you're looking at the Sportster Iron, you're probably checking out some other bikes too. For instance, Honda offers the Shadow Phantom, which is almost uncomfortably close in appearance to the Sporty Iron. If you're into air-cooled motorcycles too, you might be checking out a Yamaha Star Bolt. Air-cooled motorcycles offer a simplicity of service and aesthetic appeal that can be hard to match from a liquid-cooled motorcycle. Finally, and perhaps most notably, the other competitor for the Sporty Iron is the new Indian Scout 60. The Scout 60 is the only other bike that I'm aware of that competes with this bike that's made by an American manufacturer. So if having a domestically produced bike is important to you, you're probably going to give a good long look at that bike. Now having said all that, we could probably begin the review right now, but I feel like I would be shortchanging sporty owners and potential sporty owners if I didn't mention the Mr. Potato Head-like nature of the Sportster. Due to the fact that the Sportster has remained unchanged for so long, it means there's a vibrant aftermarket available for this motorcycle. So when I'm reviewing this bike, I know that I have to remember that if there's something I don't love about the motorcycle, there's probably some way to change it very easily due to the aftermarket. I also know too, lots of folks run out and buy a Harley Sportster specifically because they want to make this bike their very own. They want to change out all sorts of parts on it to make it the perfect bike for them. So I'm going to keep that in the back of my head as I'm on top of this bike. Right now I'm going to grab a helmet, suit up, and head out for a ride. Come on, let's roll. On the Sportster, we can talk about what's in the Sportster. The 883cc V-Twin has plenty of punch. It's enough to keep new riders entertained and also some old salty dogs too. There's a lot of power here in the area where folks use it on the street, low in the rev range, lots and lots of torque. But it's not all peaches and cream on a Sportster. Look down here by my toe. You can see that my exhaust pipe and my front motor mount are covered in motor oil. 
Harleys aren't known for being the most oil tight bikes around, and unfortunately that's sort of the case with this iron too. Just one of those things you have to live with if you love Harleys. One of the other things that makes riding a Harley kind of a visceral experience is how loud the motors are. This iron is a very loud bike, and I'm not talking just about the exhaust, I'm talking about the engine itself. Look here, you can see the pushrod tube covers. That's right, this is a pushrod V-twin. This thing is making plenty of mechanical noise in the valve train. One of the other things that keeps the engine a little bit on the loud side is piston slap. You'll hear that from time to time. Look down here, see all those fins on the engine? It's air-cooled as well, which means that they build these a little bit on the loose side and you will hear some piston slap. Now some of you may think that the build quality is suspect because of that, and in fact it's actually quite the opposite. It's those loose tolerances that allow Evos to live happy and long lives. It's part of the reputation that the Evo has earned for itself as a very, very bulletproof motor. Now all that power comes through a five-speed transmission. Here, check this out while I shift. Hear that clunk? There's a big clang that comes along with a Harley shift. I like to say that Harley-Davidson transmissions are a lot like black licorice. You either love them or you hate them. If you're used to that, that precision click that you'll get with a metric bike, it's a totally different story on a Harley-Davidson. These things clang into place. It's kind of like shifting an old Alice Chalmers. Now when it comes to stopping beauty, the Sportster is kind of a mixed bag. You can see up front here, we've got an 11 and a half inch rotor squeezed by a twin pot caliper. Same setup out back, except we have a 10 and a half inch caliper. Now these aren't the greatest brakes in the world, but they're totally commensurate with the going power of this bike. Stopping power is right in line. Nobody's gonna confuse these with Brembo monoblocks, but hey, there's pretty good feel at very least because of these braided lines that Harley thought to put onto the motorcycle from the factory. One last thing you're gonna have to upgrade. From there, handling is really the next thing on everybody's mind. Now, Sportsters are not all created equal. I happen to think that the Iron 883 is the best handling Sportster you can currently buy from Harley because of this front tire. Look at that baby. It's 19 inches, but it's nice and skinny. Tips into a turn easily. This goes wherever you point the motorcycle. You can see here too, this is a 39 millimeter narrow glide front end. Harley's been using it for a long time. It's not the greatest front end of the world, but there's plenty of aftermarket support to make sure that this front end does exactly whatever you want it to. Now out back, of course, we have new for 2016 preload adjustable shocks. These are gonna really be a big improvement over the previous iterations of suspension we saw on the iron. However, if you're doing lots of two up work, I'm gonna say they're still gonna be inadequate. You're gonna have to bump them up. And the reason is just the travel. There's not much travel with these. You're well under two inches of travel and that's not really appropriate, especially if you're gonna be moving two up on your motorcycle. The Michelin Scorcher tires are fantastic. And with the exception of some poor ground clearance and these hero blobs down here, this is a great handling bike. All in all, this is a really customizable package. I'm pretty happy with this motorcycle and it seems like a great basis for a starting point. So let's move on down the road and we'll talk about some of the things you can do to make this Sportster your very own. Now, as we just demonstrated, the Sportster is a pretty competent motorcycle, but that's not to say that improvements can't be made. I would modify some things in the Sportster were this my bike, and I'm sure the things that I would change are probably not too different than things that lots of other Sportster owners have changed over the course of the years. Here's what I'd start out with on the iron. First things first, I think I'd try and give the motor a little bit of attention. That 883cc mill is plenty punchy, but I'm a little bit spoiled. I've also ridden bikes with this same mill that was uncorked, and man, they really did rip. But for those of you who aren't looking to go out there and rip apart your brand new bike, you can probably pick up a few easy ponies just by throwing some simple bolt-ons on there. Let's talk about an air cleaner, a full system exhaust, and I'd also probably put a fuel controller onto this bike to really pep it up a little bit and help unstrangle it some. From there, I would turn my attention to the saddle. The saddle looks great on this bike, but man, it was killing me after about 175 miles. I would replace this with something a little bit more comfortable and something that had a spot for my honey. I like to ride two up from time to time. If you're considering putting an iron in your garage though, you should know that it's not just a two up seat you have to buy. There are no provisions on here for a set of P pegs. So not only do you have to mentally account for a set of passenger pegs, but you're also gonna wind up purchasing passenger peg mounts. They don't come with the iron, you're gonna have to come out of your pocket to put a set on there. 
The final things I would modify on the sports are what I'm gonna call the little things. Stuff like where I touch the bike. Parts of me that interact with the motorcycle kinda of needs to be modified so that it's personal and it makes me feel good when I'm on the bike. Now we're gonna address all these items and probably some more in our sporty modification series. Be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube so that you can catch all of the changes we make on our iron and find out how these parts work out and what might work well for your Sportster. As for me, I'm gonna head back inside and grab myself a sarsaparilla. Then I'm gonna cruise around a little bit more on some of the roads here in Nevada. I'm Lemmy, I'm out of here.